morning all. Uh, so we are entering our twentieth day of our this twelve uh, workshop. So today we will have uh, two of our uh, own best students uh, presenting uh, their research topics, works, and their research topics, and how uh, they are going to conduct their experiments. They are going to explain us uh, in detail about. Uh, molecular ducting, uh, ADMBT analysis, and uh, molecular dynamics. Without further delay, I will invite uh, Kalambari. Uh, she is from uh, Alagappa College of uh, Technology, PCT, Anna University, Chennai. She will be giving a uh, short lecture on uh, molecular ducting. Uh, Kalambari. Yes, sir. I'll share my screen. Can you see my screen? Ah, yes. You can go to full screen. Yes. So, um, I'm going to be talking about computer aided drug design primarily today. So, I'm going to be talking about molecular docking, whereas Anjali is going to be talking about these other two topics. So, since we live in the world of, of uh, COVID lockdowns, we've all heard of uh, molecular docking and computational studies from home. I'd just like to start by saying that I'm not an expert in any way. I'm just sharing whatever knowledge I have so that you people can also incorporate this into your studies if it interests you. So basically, we're going to look a little on what it is, but primarily we're going to look at how it's being done. I think there was a, there was a session a couple of days ago about molecular docking in depth. So if you want to know more about the theory of it, please go check that out. I'm just going to give a brief overview. So basically, there are several different ways that a protein and a, a ligand can interact. So molecular docking just helps you model that and uh, study the interactions in it. So there are two aspects of any interaction. One is to see what it looks like, and the other is to quantify the amount of energy released in it. So to see what it looks like, we use a sampling algorithm. And to quantify the energy, we get a scoring function. And there are several types of docking, like protein, protein docking, docking a metal ion into a protein, a, lig a ligand, etc. But I'm going to be talking about protein ligand docking only primarily. So a sampling algorithm is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. You try different ways of fitting a jigsaw puzzle a piece into a puzzle and you kind of find the best way uh, based on uh, which fits best and its energy. So this energy is calculated using a scoring function. The scoring function will use different, different sorts of interactions, different uh, uh, scalars to modify it, etc. This is just one example. This will vary based on different algorithms. The algorithms vary because of the way they calculate their scoring, uh, their uh, energy release. So as to how we perform docking, we have a ligand which we should prepare. A ligand is like a drug or a phytochemical or anything you want to dock to a protein. And the protein will be your target of interest. We dock these using softwares like uh, autodocrine, autodocrina, et cetera. And then we look at the binding energy of different forces and identify the one with the lowest binding energy. So even though I'm saying that minus 8.1 is the most negative here and therefore the best, minus 7.5 is also very close. It's just 0.6 kcal away. So you can also look at that and see the difference and uh, see what the interactions are like there. And then finally, you visualize it to uh, know where it's going and binding with this energy so that you can kind of understand, try to understand how it's having an impact. So these are some of the tools used for docking and their algorithms. And uh, the one I am going to be looking at today is called PyRx. It's a very uh, user-friendly tool, for uh, especially for high-throughput screening. You can also use SwissDoc uh, because it is uh, it will not occupy any computational uh, your computer's memory. If your system is slower and if you have fewer ligands, you can use SwissDoc. It's an online server. Both of these operate using this uh, server called Autodoc Vena. So then uh, I've, I'm going to be explaining this based on Anjali's study only, based on the ligands that she used. So the ligand, these were the five ligands that uh, she used, and this was her protein. And uh, I've already docked four of these because it can take time, but I will be demonstrating using this ligand called tricin. So to get the ligand structure, we first go to uh, PubChem and search for the, uh, yes, sir. Can you put a little bit slower? 
Yes, sir. I think you are going very fast. So, yes. Everyone needs to understand, right? Yes, sir. I understand. So we go to Pubchem and search for the name of the ligand that we want. Sometimes it will be like among the different names. So you just look for this, and we open this in a new tab. So when you go to Pubchem, you can sorry. You can get different types of data about it. Like you can get the structure, you can get any literature about it, patents. There's a lot of information here which you can explore and play around with. And you also get other uh, other synonyms of this compound, and you can use this also to perform any literature searches. So we need to download the structure of this molecule to dock it. You need the structure to see how it binds. So uh, the thing about docking is that uh, the protein will remain uh, inflexible, at least in this case, and the ligand will bend in different, different, the drug will bend in different ways to bind to it. Obviously, we know that in a system, molecules tend to bend differently based on the type of interactions that they observe. So we take the 3D STF. This STF is a spatial data file. So it gives you the data of the space between different um, atoms. But if you can only get a 2D structure, I will teach you how to convert it to a 3D structure. So uh, for um, PyRx to process the file, it will need to be converted to another format called mol 2 It's like if you are listening to music and you want um, uh, it on, some devices can only take MP3, right? When, but when you record it, it will be taken up in a format like a WAV, WAV format. So it's like using an audio converter in the old, like before to kind of convert it to a format that our device can accept. So we will use this software called Open Babel. It is a, you can use the, it's a freely available software. It's a graphic user interface. But if you don't want to download the software, you're using it only once, you can also go to this Open Babel website. So uh, now I'll show you how to use this website. So uh, this software. So um, I already have the document, the molecule downloaded. I'm opening beta cytosterol here because that is the first one, uh, or rather I'm going to open tricin because that is the one I have not yet converted. I'm going to demonstrate that for you. So I am going to open tricin and I am just copying the name of this because I'm going to save the output file also with this. So we all, when um, these compounds are saved, they usually do not make the hydrogens explicit. It, the hydrogen are assumed based on the valency of the compounds with them. So if you have C with a double bond on one side and a single bond on one side, we know that there is only one H that can come there, right? So we have to make it explicit for docking. Actually, PyRx will include it automatically, but I usually prefer to do it on the, to be on the safe side because if we are using some other software, it's a good practice to have. So now you uh, now that this is done, uh, remember I told you that in some cases you cannot get the 2D SDF. So if you can, if you like, you cannot get the 3D SDF. So if you get only this 2D, come to Open Babel, go down and select Generate 3D coordinates. So that will give you the 3D file. But what I've downloaded now is a 3D file only. So I will choose the output uh, output output region and I'm giving it a name, which is the same name as what it had before. So now that this is done, I've selected the output and I will give convert. And what I'm going to do next is I have the ligand now. I will go get my protein. So this is the protein she has used. I will be downloading this protein uh, in the PDB format. However, for now, I already have it ready here. So even though this, this protein, one second. This protein, if you see, it has one chain here, another chain here. Let me show you how you can check the number of chains. There are four chains here. You go to, this is UCSF Chimera, again, a free software. If you go to open, you can open any saved file. So this is the file that I have saved and I have opened it here. So if you go to tools and sequence, you can see that there are four chains. I'm going to hit select show for all four so that I can see the names of all the four chains. Okay, so this is ERK2, which is also called mitogen activated protein kinase one. So as you can see, this ribosomal protein is something I don't need. It is called chain E and chain B. And 
you can see that chain A and B are pretty much the same. So even though I have two, it's going to go bind to only one. So to save computational cost, I'm going to choose only one chain. I'm going to select only chain A. So I want to delete the others to make it easier for my system. So I'm going to go to select chain and chain A. Then I will go here to invert all models. So it will select everything except chain A. Go to actions, atom bonds, and delete. Now I have only this. And if I select save PDB, I can save just this, which is what I have saved as this ERK2.pdb. Now I have prepared my protein. And sorry, I also need to remove any existing uh, chemicals uh, in this. It can be water, it can be a ligand that they used to crystallize it and things like that. So you will go to select residue and all non-standard. And now again, do the same atom bonds and delete. Okay. So now there is nothing except your chain here. So there, all this is just side chains which are being protruding out. Don't worry about it. Now you can use this to uh, dock. So save this PDB and you're good to continue. Um, so then what we're going to do is, um, we are going to come here and load it into PyRx to dock. So um, I have already, as I mentioned, I've already docked these other four. So I'm just going to show you how to dock Tricent. I think someone has asked a question. I'll come back to it in the end if it's all right. Um, all two. So this is the file. You just go here to add ligand and uh, select the file that is in mol2 format. Um, this uh, the server is uh, the software is a little computationally heavy and it can cause your or it can occasionally crash. So don't worry about that. Just a second, it tends to do this from time to time. Yeah, so it's loaded and the compound is, yeah, it's here. So I select this compound and this is the ligand that I've loaded. So you can see that it selected one ligand and this is the source of the PDB file. So I select forward. And as you can see, I'm using Vena wizard, okay? So Vena wizard is what I'm using. So now this is where you have to select the size of, that you want, the box that you wanted to explore for confirmations. Um, use a blind, so we maximize it to increase the entire protein. So you can either drag each face like this to increase the size, or you can right click and drag the mouse up and down to increase the size of the box on the whole. So as you can see, I have covered the protein fairly, um, I've covered the protein well. And the larger the box, the more space is going to, more time is going to take to calculate because it will explore every part of that box. So try to fit the protein correctly, but not leave too much extra space. So that is fine. And so there's this thing called exhaustiveness. This is about how many times it will go back and run, like it'll run multiple cycles of this to check the value. And so I have set it to eight, but if your system is a little older or it has a lot of things running or something like that, it, you can also set it to five. Eight is preferable, but five is okay if your system cannot handle a very uh, high computational uh, calculation going on. So I'm going to hit forward and it is going to start docking. So I will show you what the docking results were for the other four. This is what the docking results look like for the other four proteins. And so when this one docks, I will also incorporate that result into this. So now, I will show now you also would like now that you will have a quantified result. You know what the energy of binding is. But like I told you in this slide, there are two things you want to look at. You want to look at the binding affinity and you also want to look at the confirmation because you have to see where it binds, how it binds, what is the importance of that site, and things like that, right? So mm -hmm. let this finish docking and I will show you how to do that also. Uh, the, you can actually select more ligands like this. I selected just one ligand. When you select this, you can select control and select any other ligands that you would like to include in this. So this is done docking. 
sometimes after this uh, finishes docking the app will crash and it will close it is still not an issue you can continue as is it will not affect you will have your results they will not be affected so um, come to this auto dock um, page and then here erca2 is the protein that i docked and these were the five ligands that i docked so since tricin was what i docked just now select display so this will show me the top nine poses of tricin the software would have tried nearly 99 but it were 99 poses but it will give you the top nine poses so far now i am going to save this uh, confirmation because this is a top confirmation you can see that the energy of this is energy of this docking is minus 8.4 which is actually higher than all which is actually more negative than all the other values that we've seen so far but again, these three are very similar. So it may, it, you should probably check the other two also. So for now, let me show you this. So um, this model, save as PDB. And I am going to save it here to top posts. So this is going to be Tyson top posts. So now you can visualize this in two different ways. So I have this, this is the protein structure. I can open it here to just see what it looks like. So this, if I look at it, I will see which residues it is near, but um, it doesn't tell me exactly what interactions are happening or anything of the sort. It's a, if you want to see where all everything is binding and kind of cluster it, visualize it and do things like that, Chimera is very convenient. You can play around more with this. I don't want to go into the details of this in great depth right now. But let me show you how to visualize it with Discovery Studio, where you can see which residues it's interacting with. Okay. So now I'm going to come here and open the PDB file I used, which is ERK2. And I'm also going to open the top post of price in which I downloaded. So this would be the top post. So as you can, so I'm going to copy this. You can either use Control C or right click and copy. So then you paste it. If you can see the ligand has been pasted here. This is where it is bound. So if you right click, you can view this thing called hierarchy where you can see that this price and top post has been added here. So now if you select ligand interactions, it will calculate all the interactions that are occurring here. But if you want to see which residues it's interacting with exactly, you should select this show 2D diagram. And you can see which residues it's interacting with, what nature of bond it is. You're getting a lot of information here, right? You can also see things like the, if you select aromatic here, you select the ligand. And if you select aromatic here, so, okay. There is no aromatic here, but if you select hydrogen bonding here, you can see the nature of the hydrogen bonding. You can see which are donors, which are acceptors, and all this information. You can play around with these options depending on what you want to discuss in your in your results. So then, this now that you have a list of residues here, you can perform further analysis on this. You can uh, see the conservation of these residues. You can read the structure paper and see if there's some information about these residues and their function. So if suppose these are active site residues, you know that your ligand, your ligand has a good chance of actually interfering with the proteins action. So I would also like to place a disclaimer here that docking does not tell you that a protein, uh, that a ligand affects a target. You know that it binds to a target. You need further wet lab studies to tell if it's an upregulation, a downregulation, or a neutral interaction. So then um, this is pretty much how you visualize and do everything here. I'll just give you a quick recap of the whole procedure here. So basically, you to get the ligand structure, you make a pumpkin search. You can get a 2D structure or a 3D conformer. If you get the 3D conformer, uh, so you will convert it using a software called OpenBabel. If it's a 3D conformer, you will convert TSDF to MOL2. If it's a 2D structure, you will generate the 3D coordinates also because you need a 3D structure for molecular docking. For protein structure, you can go to Uniprot, which will tell you if your structure has an experimental structure or not. So if there are experimental structures, that is definitely preferable because you know for sure that that is the structure. And the lower the resolution, that is the closer it is to one nanostrom, the more reliable it is. But again, a problem that has occurred with PyRx is that when you use very low, low resolution structures, for some residues, 
PDB will have two different chains that are possible because you know with more confidence about the structure. So PyRx can cause can cause can get confused about which you know, confirmation to use, which can prevent you from talking it. So if that occurs, you can try to use the other chain of that, or you can try selecting a chain, or you can try increasing the resolution a little. If you're having problems at like 1.5 angstrom, you can try increasing the resolution to 2 angstrom, which is still a good resolution to use for docking. If you cannot find an experimental structure, you have to use predicted structures. So the you can use homology models. If they have more than 60% identity, that is definitely better because the uh, amino acid chain chains are also modeled more accurately. But if not, a 30% to 40% identity is also will also give you a pretty good fit because the backbone is correctly matched. If your homology models have less than 30% identity, it is not recommended to use them. So maybe in that case, you can try using alpha fold because it is predicted based on multiple structures. But even then, alpha fold has varying confidence levels. So you should, you know, especially in the end terminal regions, which are just free uh, loops. So you should pro probably go and edit out the regions of the of the protein, which are not uh, very reliable. If you want, I can tell you how to do this in more depth later. But now I'm not doing it in the interest of time. Alternatively, you could also use a Benicio prediction, which is like just predicting it based on uh, based on sequence. But this is not very reliable because I think we all know that to this date, the protein, we don't know how a protein structure folds. Like you know, there are so many different uh, possible configurations that a protein could take. And we don't have not figured out why the protein folds a given way. And so ab initio predictions are not very reliable and not very accurate. So these two are more reliable methods to use. To generate a homology model, you can use Swiss model or modular, and you can uh, use experimental structures from PDB or uh, RCSP PDB or different forms of it. They're all, they all have the same data. So to, to process the protein structure, you will get the protein structure from any one of those sources. Remove any metal ions and ligands using the uh, delete uh, non-standard residues method that I showed you. And you will delete, you will keep only one chain by using, the, by going to, uh, so by selecting the other chains and removing it. Anyway, it docks only to one chain. So to dock it to PyRx, to Vena, to uh, the protein in PyRx, we will add the ligand and the macromolecule. We will select our ligands and proteins. And, uh, and protein. You can select only one protein at a time, but you can select as many ligands as you want. But just know that the more ligands you select, the more time it will take. Then you will select your grid box and bring it to the size that you want. You will set your exhaustiveness based on uh, your computational power. Then you will dock it and identify the most negative binding energy. Then you can visualize it. You can save the poses of interest. As you can see that it will just give you a protein structure, uh, a chemical a ligand structure. So you will use Chimera or BioVR to uh, visualize it with the protein where you can open it with both. And this part is largely based on BioVR because it gives you information about the residues too. So you open both, copy the, res the ligand onto the protein, view the ligand interactions by selecting these options and show the 2D diagram by doing this. So this is how you visualize, how you dock and visualize ligands and proteins. Now, Anjali will explain the next part. I will take, I will answer, I will go over the questions while she's presenting and I will answer all the questions in the end with her. Thank you. Thank you, Anjali. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask. Sir, uh, can Anjali also finish and then I'll answer in the end? Because uh, uh, both uh, of us sorry. know this. And, uh, yeah, okay. Any questions for us? No questions, then we will move to our uh, second part of the topic PDMT uh, and molecular dynamics. Uh, we have with us uh, Anjali Sharma uh, from Nish Pandu College, uh, University of Delhi. Uh, she will be giving the talk. Anjali. Yeah, thank you, Anjali. Uh, 
Sanjali? Yes, sir. Yes, you can start. Uh, am I perceptible? Yes. Okay. We'll go to the slides. Sure. Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Today I would be discussing about the another next important step after docking uh, that is known as the admit screening. Now, as Kadambri has uh, explained docking in a very wonderful manner, uh, just to tell you that is the first most technical step of this whole drug discovery pipeline. Uh, so, uh, the admit screening, it is a very critical piece in drug discovery and uh, this type of study can help to determine the viability of the drug by answering these key questions. So the first one is how much of the drug is absorbed, that is the absorption. The second is where is the drug distributed within the body and what is the rate and extent of the distribution. The third is how fast is the drug metabolized, what is the mechanism of action and what metabolite is formed and is it active or toxic. The next one is the elimination which tells us how is the drug excreted and how quickly. And the final one is toxicity that tells us that does this drug have a toxic effect to the body system or organism. Now, these series of questions, they are like very important after the docking step because they would assure us of the fact that, okay, this particular molecule that we have found, that we have found that was docking to the particular protein, it can be incorporated into the body. So, after having read many papers, I've realized that earlier people used to conduct these studies known as they used to find out the admit score so for which what they used to do they used to write these heavy equations and they used to consider different different databases and then compare it and then finally could infer that is that molecule uh, answering all of these questions but that is like a very perplexing and a very difficult uh, protocol to follow so after comparing many papers, I have prepared this pipeline, which you might not find in the similar order in any other paper, because I've combined all of these tools as per my ease and as per as per like if they match all the criteria and could tell us that if this molecule is worth studying and going for the next step of the drug discovery pipeline. So, um. These in vitro and in vivo studies, they are conducted to enable a drug developer to make a go no go decision regarding if a drug should be selected as a drug candidate and moved into the late stage preclinical pre -clinical and clinical programs. So computer models have been fostered as a wild alternative to experimental procedures for prediction of ADME, especially at initial steps when the investigated chemical structures are numerous but the availability of compounds is scarce. A large variety of in silico methods share the objective of predicting ADME parameters from molecular structure and I would be discussing about some of them. So the very first requirement of all these servers would be to just go to PubChem and search for your ligand and then take this isomeric smiles or you could have canonical smiles available and then just copy them or you could even download them. The next step is to upload these smiles. So first, I'm the first tool I'm talking about is known as Swiss Admi web tool. So this tool that you can see here is freely accessible and meant for user friendly submission and easy analysis of the results. Also for non expert in CAD. I think this is the most important point. So the actual input is a list of smiles. So as you can see here this box here 
you are going to put the smiles or you can even draw your structure if the smiles are not available for your ligand and after that you will be clicking on run so you can add as many smiles of different different structures as you want so as uh, kadambari presented the result of the docking we could uh, see that there were three uh, molecules that were having topmost binding energy like it was uh, close to one another so those were tocosterol cytosterol and tricene so what was the first step after docking i did it was that i ran the smiles for these three molecules here to check that are these three molecules like worth entering the body or if they could enter the body without harming it so uh, before i tell you the result okay this is just what will happen when you will uh, click on run so as in when you click on run this such type of window will get open which tell you about these different parameters uh, this panel is headed by the molecule name as you can see on the top and an up arrow button to scroll to the top of the page the molecule is first described by its chemical structure and canonical smiles as i just told and here you can see this figure this pink area represents the optimal range for each properties so properties like uh, lipophilicity molecular weight as you can see here and uh, it can tell you about the solubility as well as the saturation so if you see here this example the compound is predicted not orally bioavailable because you can see it is too flexible and too polar like it is too much stretched on this side so by just looking at this figure only like i've not gone into the depth of those uh, criteria i'm just looking at the figure and i can tell you that okay this compound even it, if uh, it has docked properly it uh, it cannot enter you cannot incorporate this into your body because of this uh, low polarity so here i have attached the result of uh, one of those phyto compounds out of three which were having the a very good binding energy as kadambari has showed so this particular phyto compound is tricene so the results for the other two phyto compounds that were docosterol and cytosterol they were not good because why were they not good i'll just tell you but why tricene is good let me tell that to you first now as you can see here you can see molecular weight so this is 330 so there is a bar that has been uh, mentioned uh, by the lipinski rules these are the set of rules that tell us that if the drug can be incorporated or not so the molecular weight should be between 150 and 500 so this is 330 so this tells us that okay this molecule is perfect in terms of this molecular weight now if i look up at the solubility i can check that it's moderately soluble so it's very important that our molecule should be soluble because only then you could uh, just uh, get into the uh, a soluble environment in our body the other thing i would like to mention is the lipinski rules so the pioneer work of lipinski et al examined orally active compounds to define physiochemical ranges for high probability to be an oral drug so this so called rule of five describes the relationship between pharmacokinetic and physiochemical parameters so the rule of five distinguish whether a mol molecule is orally absorbed well or not and that is what we call as the lipinski rules so uh, it uh, includes the molecular weight which should be less than 500 as you can see it is less than 500 so okay it is matching it uh, then it checks for the water partition coefficient then it checks for the number of hydrogen bond donors and the number of hydrogen bond acceptors so in short this particular server just tells you if there is any kind of violation to these five rules so here you can see that it is saying zero violation so this tells us that okay tricene is now worth working on but the other two molecules they were violating these rules so that was very clear that i cannot proceed with them even if they had a very high binding energy the other thing you can see here is you can see this drug li uh, deed likeliness so it is saying yes here so that is also like a good thing and now it's telling you that you could easily proceed with this particular phyto compound for other studies now some other things uh, you can get to know here is um the skin the log kp skin value 
here the skin perme the skin permeation so this prediction of the kp that is the permeability coefficient for the transport of compounds through the mammalian epidermis is based on a linear model so the more negative log kp the less skin permeant the molecule would be the next thing this particular server would tell you is about the synthetic accessibility value so this is a score based on the fragmental analysis of structures of more than 13 million compounds immediately shippable by vendors with the assumption that the more a molecular fragment is frequent the easier the molecule is to make so a score that is between 1 and 10 okay so it tells you like the score that is uh, like close to 1 is e it could be easily synthesized and if it is close to 10 so it would be very difficult to synthesize so since it is a value that is close to 3 uh, 3.21 so it tells us that yes it is a very easily synthesized drug like if you will go into uh, incorporate this phyto compound and make a drug out of it so all of these criteria confirms that yes this molecule could be dispatched and could be converted into a drug so uh, this uh, particular uh, server it lets you download the result in two ways either you could export in comma separated text file by clicking the csv red icon that you will find on the top only or the second way is to copy the values in the clipboard of your computer so the purpose of telling is just that this particular software is very handy but all of this study is really very important because if you will not know all of these property you cannot really proceed uh, with any of your molecule that you've talked the next such server uh, is known as pkcsm so this basically uses graph based signatures to develop predictive models of central admi properties for drug development so here also uh, you will copy your smile or you could download your smiles and you just going to put it here or you can even paste it here then as you can see here you could run separately also the check like you could separately find just the absorption or the metabolism or if if you if you want to find all of these things together then you will click on admit so as in when i'll click on admit i would get a table like this so this will also tell me uh, it would it also in, it includes all of these things that were in the earlier software but it includes an extended information of some more criteria like um, here you can find this caco2 permeability so the caco2 monolayer helps to predict absorption of orally administered drug higher caco2 permeability would translate in a good predicted value so uh, it should be like higher than 0.1 so it is like a good value to uh, go with then the next thing is the intestinal absorption so less it should be less than 30 percent i am sorry if the intestinal absorption is less than 30 percent then it tells that your uh, drug is poorly absorbed so here it is like much greater than it so it tells us that if you're going to use tricine uh, for making your drug then that particular drug it can be very nicely incorporated into your intestines and your body uh the next thing you could uh, know here is the water solubility as you can check here um and you can even know the skin permeability and that was available from the previous server as well but this tells you about the number here so um this log kp should be greater than minus 2.5 if it is that so you're good to go then it can also tell us about the brain barrier permeability if it can cross brain the tricine it cannot cross brain like these values uh, they're not enough they, they tell that it cannot cross because uh, you need to have a value that should be greater than 0.3 if you want a particular phyto compound to cross but this is not a problem because it now tells us the fact that if you want to use this tricine if you want to use tricine to your brain like because i, I conducted a study for uh, uh, testing if that molecule is an antidepressant or not so uh, correctly i have to just send it to brain so now i know that i cannot directly send it to brain but i can use the bioengineering technique and uh, techniques and bioengineer it to um, any bacteria or maybe virus and then we can send it to brain so all of this information you can know it from here 
the other thing uh, you ca you could know is about the amine toxicity which will tell you if that particular uh, compound it is it carcinogenic or not so it is not so it that is also uh, that why also i could know that tricin is a good candidate to conduct the studies after so all of these uh, information which are very important to deduce that if it's going to cause something like hepatotoxicity or skin sensitization so it is not causing and it is very important especially in case of all the natural compounds because all these compounds that are available in the plants these phytochemicals we really don't know what effect are they going to have on our body so these studies become very important for that now another such tool this is known as the pdcsm ppi tool so this is a machine learning approach that uses a graph based representation of small molecules to guide identification of inhibitors modulating protein protein interaction so this tool i identified it later but this tool uh, like it i i feel it's it's the most important tool and it you could use it in your initial steps also like before the docking process because what it does it tells you about if there are any inhibitors that are present for all these phyto compounds so when i ran my results here i could find here like this also works the same way that you just have to put the smiles you you will get this particular server and then you have to put smiles and you would get this data so here as you can see uh it shows that the, the phytochemical is inhibitor of this ras so as uh, pathway now this pathway it includes the erc protein the the particular protein kadambari uh, showed you uh, like show, was showing the docking with so this particular uh, software is now confirming this to me like it can confirm even without docking that uh, these phyto compounds would have a effect on this particular pathway ras pathway that includes the erk protein so this could help you filter uh like filter from the big list of phyto compounds like my study was a very basic study because the plant was having just six main phyto compounds but when you actually carry out these drug discovery pipelines you are having a list of approximately 150 to 200 phytochemicals where you have to really filter out that which particular phytochemical i should use it as a ligand and dock to the protein so such type of servers are very important to just filter out so if i could have used it earlier i could have filtered it out earlier only that okay tricin docosterol and cytosterol these main are important ones and i think i could go with them because all of these three phytochemicals showed that they were having this impact on this ras pathway um also it can tell you about the molecular weight and these things like h donor or h acceptors as i showed it to you i think it's better to do and swiss add me check the first server i showed it to you because it includes in all the lipinski rules and tells you that if it's violating or not now the last uh, software i used for my admit check was this particular predictor that tells us about it confirms us about the toxicity so you'll just put your smiles and uh, then you can run it to check if it's causing any such toxicity or not and uh, i mean this was this is not for tricin i ran it for some other uh, particular uh, phytochemical as it was down that time so it can tell you about all these things like any eye irritation or the skin sensitization the liver toxicity etc uh now after having conducting these uh, admit checks what is the next thing you should go for so as kadambari told that docking just tells you that if that particular ligand like is it it can if it is binding to the protein or not it cannot tell you about uh, how good it will bind what effect it will show if it will bind and what will be the whole like thing of this energy and how will that particular ligand and protein behave in your body so it's very important to know all of these things because uh, we need to ultimately test the repercussions of uh, these particular ligand and protein on our body so for that what is the next step next step is to go for the molecular dynamic simulation now due to the limitations of current simulation methodologies including the high computational costs and approximations of molecular forces required which requires a lot of time like 5 uh, 6 hours 
is the at least I'm talking about. And such heavy calculations, I haven't performed the molecular dynamics yet, but I would like to give you a gist of the process so you could know that how this works because molecular dynamic simulations is not at all an easy thing and it requires an extensive computational setup so it was not possible for me to do it on uh, like uh, P uh, my pc because it doesn't support these heavy computational setups so uh, what ha uh, happens basically in molecular dynamics i would just tell you it in a very crude manner it is a very wrong thing from my end to communicate such technical process verbally but i would just cover some basic steps that what all uh, it tells you and how does it take place so molecular dynamics it actually need your protein ligand complex as kadambri has downloaded in the pdb form or the pdb qt form so you will take it from your uh, studio uh, the discovery studio then uh, you you will take this complex and with the ligand which is with the ligand already in the site where you want to study the interactions so for this step you can use a complex resulting from a docking simulation or just a complex that you create in a molecular drawing software you can load both molecules and then move the ligand until it is in the region you want so the md software md is mo molecular dynamics so md software then will solve the Newton, newton's equation of movement where the position velocity acceleration and force on each atom is calculated in this case uh, like both the protein and ligand will be treated because we've uh, taken them as a whole uh, next uh, typically the ligand is simulated alone to explore the conformational space and the different conformation are then logged on to the region protein molecule then md simulations are run often using a temperature gradient termed simulated annealing coupled with energy minimizations run the potential energies are then extracted to allow for an accurate docking score so this provides the advantage of not being reliant on the scoring functions and allowing both the flexibility of ligand uh, as well as the binding driven conformational efforts so we, what we do is that we perform these md simulations uh, in time like like uh, nanoseconds microseconds to check bond vibrations ligand binding allosteric regulation and even the protein folding so uh, to take an example if you are working on a complex that resides in cells you will want to solve the complex that is add water all around it so that your research will uh, more closely mimic the environment so all these things you cannot know with docking so that is where we use this dynamics when we set up a condition where we set water like conditions and then we put our ligand and molecule and protein and we study that what effect it is having on it so you will you will have to create a water box for that you're having the softwares for it uh, and this water box as small as possible it should be as small as possible because the more molecules the more pairwise force calculations so the system seen um it would i, I mean the system that i know about they have roughly 30000 molecules and when the computer does force calculations it uses classical mechanics where a molecule is treated as a treated as a ball and the bond between molecule is treated as a spring so there are force fields that assign values to the effect of london dispersion forces van der waal forces permanent dipoles and all of such forces so i know this was like very vague way to give you a gist about the molecular di dynamics but i think i could at least tell you that why is this study important and like this is the other most and i think even more important than docking because if you will no not know this then you could not just infer your uh, final uh, clinical results about any drug so these are some tools that i have mentioned so this chromax it is an open source you can use it Desmond is a paid. This Lamd also is a paid one, and then this here is this system builder. So, what was the thing that uh, this Chromax? Uh, this takes very time. Like it takes days to give the results. I couldn't use it, and this is computationally heavy as well. But this system builder, uh, it was an easier one, and I could have used it. But it has been running down since two days. I don't know about today, but I couldn't just get the final results. So maybe I could just attach the paper for it, and you can get a gist of how does it work. Because it is this uh, this particular software is a plug and play thing, but with that you really need to do some calculations, and you could have to. 
calculate some energies and then you have to incorporate in it so that is why people go for these paid softwares now i have attached this paper here i would love to share this uh, ppt and you could just check this paper which gives an outline of all of these um, softwares and servers and tell us that how can you perform this molecular dynamics if at all you need to do in future so uh, another important thing i would like to share is that this particular thing here mentioned here this is a user friendly front end for running md simulations using the open mm toolkit on the google collab framework so what what key points do they have is to highlight the usage of cloud computing so they are using cloud computing here for the md simulation for uh, all and the second thing is to exemplify how low income research groups can perform md simulation so i think this is the future of the md simulation you could check this paper here as well as this github for the whole uh, protocol like how they go about using this and i could give you a gist of what they really do about it so what they are basically doing here is that they create a system or environment first in which they import all the libraries that are needed together so uh, you would need different different sort of amber files all of these files you would need and then it allows you to have one workspace you like you would have now a one workspace workspace which would have all the types of file here uh, for multiple operations such as numpy for operation on data stored and then you have this matplotlib for plotting and predicting through it and then having our data organized and stored in google drive as google collab does not allow users to keep data in their computing nodes as it's easy to extract from there so then they load the necessary files that is the pdb or the psf files and they equilibrate uh, them mentioning the details like temperature and pressure as i've just told now uh, then they run with the equilibrated coordinates and get the parameters required as output and an analyze the obtained md trajectory so this cloud computing protocol has really made this md easier so this is i think the future of the md where you could just it would take just two or three clicks for you to get the results rather than running it on such expensive extensive and heavy computational softwares now uh, finally uh, what i have plans for the future is that i would try to incorporate all of this study and make it as a poster and i would like to prepare uh, all of this study like as a poster to this particular conference and would like to present it under the srishti banner in the upcoming month so that is all from my side thank you i would be happy to answer any question Thank you, Anjali. As for us, if you have any doubts, you can ask. So, that's a question in the chat box. Radhanpuri, is it possible for you to tell us how to prepare a ligand for our studies? As you told your you prefer to check the hydrogen box and other tweaks to make a ligand efficient for them. so um, like i said there usually uh, so when anjali was presenting her the smiles you could see that the c it just said c c c c c there were no hatches there so similarly in the structure also it would not include any hydrogens but you don't hydrogens are a big part of any dot of any bonding right because you have hydrogen bonding you know so let me just share my screen so it was exactly what I did. The hydrogens, I'll just share it to be on the safe side. So when you say, if you don't select this add, can you see my screen? So um, in this screen, if you did not select this add hydrogens, this would still have implicit hydrogens. So based on balancey, a software could calculate it. Actually, the software that I used here will add the hydrogens even if I don't do this. So the point here is just that in case you decide to use Swiss doc like I had suggested, it is beneficial to keep this thing uh, ready, like just to make it a practice to add the hydrogens. Another thing that some people do is to minimize the energy of the ligand docking to um, uh, Kind of bring it to its most energy efficient state, like to bring it to the global minima. 
I am not very familiar with that process, but it is not always necessary also because that might not be the global minima in a natural system. So when you're simulating it here, you can just add the hydrogens and prepare the ligand to make it uh, suitable for docking. When you're doing molecular dynamics, you can maybe do more uh, ways to optimize the ligand based on that system. Uh, I would like to add about this uh, minimizing the energy. Like you could just go, if, if you're a beginner, you could just go to Pyrex and when you're having your uh, list of these ligands, you could just right click that particular box and it shows you how to minimize the energy. So I think it prepares your ligands at a primitive level. But what Kadamri did is something like it's it's a more, you know, defined way to do it. Any other questions? Hello. Um, hi, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, sir. So first of all, both of you, great presentation. Thank you for this. So I have a question for Anjali. So I remember in your third step, you said that you found your phyto compound to be inhibiting the RAS system, yeah? So from what I understand, RAS pathway is a very important pathway uh, in our cell system, yeah? So how does that help you clear that, okay, this is the compound I should go further with? Because since it's inhibiting, then it will be inhibiting a lot of uh, other cascade processes, yeah? Uh, thank you for correcting me. I, I think that was one of those phyto compounds from that thing that wasn't tricene that was one of the phyto compounds that made me infer that okay these phyto compounds are having an effect of on on this ras system which is a system i want to study about but you're absolutely correct if they are trying to inhibit uh, this particular system then it could be very you know it could lead to death as well so when i studied this for two other compounds that was docosterol and tricene i could find out that even the docosterol was inhibiting this pathway but the tricene was not having any impact on ras pathway in fact it wasn't having the impact on uh, like most of the pathways there so it could you know i could infer from there that i can use it in that uh, er key pathway i'm really sorry i just uh, i think generalized it for all the phytochemicals but that wasn't for tricene okay yeah great so one more question. So you're using a particular herb. So I was wondering, is it possible to have same uh, effects as if you use only tri uh, tricene other than, um, I mean, if you exclude all the other phytochemicals that you are extracting, okay, will it have yeah, same yeah, effects? Yeah, 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 yeah. It will, it will, because I have also uh, done a review literature on this. You could, I, I will share the papers if you want. So uh, mm -hmm. I would, I was having papers for individual phytochemicals. So all of these phytochemicals individually were having different kind of effects on brain. Some were having some neuroprotective effects. Some were directly having the antidepressant effect. So there was one uh, phytochemical known as garlic acid. It was having a direct effect. Uh, of uh, being an antidepressant but uh, to my awe it, the result it gave it was surprising because it didn't dock only i mean it was giving a very very poor binding energy and uh, the tri this tricene it gave a very nice energy and i have a paper to back it up that it can be used for both uh, this anti as an antidepressant and as a neuroprotective agent also it was not like it was an analog or I could say a derivative of tricene uh, that I could found it from here but anyway all the tricene more or less are having this antidepressant effect okay yeah great. that's great repeat your yeah. question because I might have some information to add to it I just would like to get your question right yeah, so uh, I don't remember the exact number, but uh, Anjali said that there were five or four phytochemicals that you extracted from the herb, right? So I was just wondering, since you are uh, checking all the phyto compounds to see whether it has effects or not, and then you have to reject some of them. So will it still can be used as drug if only one of the compound actually makes it to the end, you know? So, yeah, that was the question. 
So can use just one uh, compound because Anjali has obviously tested it with several uh, literature and tests. But in addition to that, if you want to, if you want to run other tests, this is actually kind of uh, what similar to what I am doing. But since I've not formulated, I, I'm kind of reworking my proposal. So I I didn't prepare a PPT based on my proposal yet. So basically, you can do this thing called systems biology, where uh, if you go to Swiss target prediction, you can predict the uh, interactors of each and every uh, phyto compound that you have, even in the plant. Like you can do it for the five herbs that are actually selected, or maybe all the um, compounds which are present in the herb itself. So you can kind of see which ones are, uh, you can, this will give you a predictive effect. It's not like molecular talking, which is actually very uh, deeply calculated based on uh, all these forces. But Swiss target prediction is also a reliable way of predicting. So you can see if there are anything else which is contributing to the effect of that plant on this uh, process or something like that. That might give you other leads to pursue and maybe create a put together or two different things to fight. All right, okay, that's great. Thank you, thank you guys. Questions? Anyone wish to ask any questions or doubts? So let me summarize today's uh, topic. So I wish to share this image with you. I hope you can all see this. So there are two ways of uh, involving practice. Okay. One is the experimental uh, method. The other one is the computational method. So in the experimental method, you normally do what is you isolate the compound, you purify it, and then you go for structural determination using excessive crystallography or NMR method or electron microscopy or TEM, SEM, whatever methods are available to use to determine the structures and what you are doing. And then you do the drug screening, like uh, drug screening, and then you go for in vivo and in vitro experiments based on your choice, like whether you want to do on, say, for cancer, anti cancer activity, or anti diabetic activity, or you know, immunomodulatory effects, anti inflammatory activity. So, like that, for whatever disease causes you want to say, you can go for in vitro and in vivo methods. And then you go for, if you are successful, then you go for clinical trials. And again, in clinical trials, there are three different phases is there clinical trial stage one, stage two, and stage three. So all, if you pass all the stages, and then you have your efficiency of your drug molecule is uh, higher, and then it has no side effects, and it has uh, also has no uh, other effects for uh, other diseases, other kinds of uh, things, then you your drug gets approval from the FDA or whatever uh, authority is there. Like uh, we have CDRI here, and then uh, it goes to the the drug goes to the market. So in the computational method, the once you get the structures determined, uh, like a protein, if for example, if it is a protein structure or any other structures molecule, then you go for the site binding prediction, okay, and then you go for the molecular docking, that is the visual screening and other all other parameters like QSAR, pharmaco and every models you are uh, predicting all these values and energies, binding energies, binding efficiencies. And then you go for the kinetic modeling and molecular dynamic stimulation. After this stage, once again, you identify the target, which is having good, very good uh, effect, efficiency, binding capacity, everything. Then you go for the, again, in vivo and in vitro experiments. Okay, so you take your drug molecule, you synthesize it, synthesize, or you purify the drug molecule, 
using methods, various uh, methods, purification methods, and then you go for the in vitro and in vitro experiments. And again, it goes to the clinical trials and FDA approval, and the drug comes to the market. So this is the uh, simpler overview of it. You cannot just only rely on the computational methods. Even if your computational methods like uh, are helping us to screen the drug molecules in a faster manner. So we have hundreds and hundreds, thousands and thousands of uh, molecules we have in our databases, and each pharmaceutical uh, companies have a large number of databases. They have their own uh, databases and to screen one molecule and bring one drug compound using the uh, uh, conventional method, that regular drug screening method, uh, it will take uh, like 10 to 14 years. Imagine 10 to 14 years it is taking a drug to reach to the market. So this advancement in recent advancements in the past decade we have in our computational systems it helps us, uh, uh, gave us a uh, uh, lot of different uh, softwares, right? These softwares are now enabling us to screen the drug molecules, the candidate drugs with different uh, ligands, receptors and ligands. And then based upon the values uh, which we have, which are uh, like processing a potent or significant value, will again go for the input process and then we go this and then we go for the clinical. So basically computation methods help us to screen all the molecules in, in a shorter duration of time so that we can get a drug at least in four up, four years, like three to four years you can bring a drug molecule to the market. So this is what computational studies uh, does in the drug discovery approach. So, you all understand if you have any other further doubts you can always write to me okay. and, uh, thank you all for joining us uh, today's quiz uh, i will uh, share the link in the whatsapp group uh, shortly uh, like give me one hour time so by 12 i will share you the quiz and the assignments. So you all also need to do the assignments, right? So I will share you the assignment questions and everything with you uh, in the WhatsApp group. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today.